Today we're going to show you how to make a simple metal casting using tin in composite mold. This is a continuation of our wax molding video that we showed the other day. So we're using a little owl, ceramic owl, as our original casting and we're going to hot glue it to the bottom of a plastic container. This plastic container acts as your mold box. You can use pretty much anything you want as a mold box. I like the plastic containers because I can just cut them off at the end and it's really simple. Other people like to use Legos or even a plastic bag can be used as a mold box within a box. Spray your object with a little bit of bubble buster to reduce surface tension so that the bubbles don't stay on the surface of the part when you pour in the composite mold. The composite mold was melted in the microwave for about a minute and a half to two minutes. The instructions say how long to do it for. This composite mold has been used many times so you'll see little specks in the composite mold. You can filter that out with a cheesecloth if necessary but in this case it won't change the mold any. And after that is cooled we cut off the mold box and we have our mold. The composite mold can be continuously reused as many times as you want. When you melt it you want to make sure you don't boil it first because that will make it darker and after a while it will add bubbles into the, into the mold. Composite mold melts at about 130 to 135 degrees Fahrenheit. You don't want to get it above about 180 degrees or 190 degrees Fahrenheit. So we'll be using a lost wax process or in this case a lost composite mold process to make the metal casting so stay tuned for how we're going to do that. But first let's remove our original master object from the composite mold mold. I'm going to clean up the edges a little bit with some scissors and then I'm just going to pop the figure out. Composite mold is a versatile mold making material. We could use it with lots of different casting materials. So check out some of our other videos on other mold making processes and castings that we've done. Now as I pull these little pieces of composite mold off the surface, I don't want to throw those out. Those can be remelted and reused to make another mold anytime. So just put it back in the container that you're storing the composite mold in. When you're storing the composite mold, keep it in an enclosed container and it will last for years and years. The composite mold is extremely flexible so you can get away with undercuts in the mold without any problems at all. After you remove the original, admire your mold cavity, make sure it's what you want. If you don't like it, you can always remelt it and make another mold easily just by putting it back in the microwave. Now I need to chill this mold so that we can pour the composite mold into the composite mold mold without it sticking together. We're using vegetable oil as a mold release for the composite mold with composite mold casting. The vegetable oil works great for this. Now we have a cold, very chilled mold because we put this in the refrigerator and freezer for a while for about an hour or so and we have the vegetable oil as a mold release so now when we pour the composite mold into that mold will solidify without it sticking to itself now let the composite mold cool to about 130 135 degrees fahrenheit so it's almost about to start to solidify and then you pour it in and it will take less time for it to solidify into a rubber casting we're showing you the metal casting process using a lost composite mold process, but the same approach also works with a wax, either a beeswax or a soy wax or pretty much any type of wax. And there's no difference between one versus the other. We're showing the composite mold because that's what we're showing as a material. So it would be the lost wax process or a lost composite mold process. Either one will work. So we put the mold in the freezer to chill a little bit faster. It took about a half hour for to chill and now we're separating the composite mold casting from the composite mold mold. To make it a little bit easier I'm going to cut a little notch down the side of the mold trying not to cut the composite mold on the inside. And I'm just using my thumb to go around the outside of that so that I can pull out the composite mold. And another option for making reusable molds is with our impressive putty which works very similar to the composite mold in that it is reusable and is heated in the microwave. The difference is it's a putty form that turns into a solid. The impressive putty also doesn't need a mold box. Now the whole point of making this composite mold casting is so that we can make a mold out of plaster that we can then pull out the composite mold. And there is our shape out of composite mold. It's very pretty. I love the 
glow of the composite mold in this case. It has a vegetable oil on it, which makes it very shiny. Now the next step in the process is to make the plaster casting. We're going to use the composite mold plaster. It has an additive in it that allows it to cure faster and makes it a little bit harder. When mixing the plaster to the water, you want to have about three parts plaster to one part water by volume. You want it to be as thick as possible but still be able to be poured. Now we're adding in a little bit of the plaster additive into the plaster so it's a stronger and cures faster and works well with the composite mold. Out of one of these containers is enough for five pounds of plaster so this will only take a little bit into the plaster at this time. As you're mixing the plaster and water together you want to make sure you break up any clumps. The plaster with the composite mold additive will take about 10 to 15 minutes to begin to solidify and you want to leave it for a couple hours to make sure it's strong. Uh, it'll get the strongest over about 24 to 48 hours. A note of caution is you do not want to pour this down the drain at any time because it will solidify in your pipes and you'll have a mess. You want the mixture to be a toothpaste like consistency. Be sure to get the sides of the bowl and make sure everything is mixed together very well. For this casting we don't need to have a mold release but if you did need a mold release I would recommend using a vegetable oil. You can also use a talcum powder or even for other plastic castings they suggest a soap of some sort. Now just put the plaster over the composite mold casting and let it solidify. I didn't mix enough of the plaster the first time so I ended up having to do two mixes of plaster and I just mixed them together while they're still in the liquid form. And tapping it allows the bubbles to rise to the surface and make sure that the plaster gets up and around all of the areas of the composite mold. I let this sit for over a day to allow it to be completely cured. Now I'm just going to pull out the plaster from the mold box and we'll then be ready to do our lost wax or in this case lost composite mold process. The concept behind the lost wax process is that you melt out the casting from the plaster leaving the voids that you then fill with the plaster. To do this, the composite mold melts at about 130 degrees, 140 degrees Fahrenheit so we need to heat up the mold and let the composite mold pour out of the mold. So we set the oven at about 200 degrees Fahrenheit and we let it heat up. It took a little bit of time for the plaster to warm up to temperature and then the composite mold just flowed out the bottom of the mold. Here's the composite mold partially melted out of it. We'll put it back in the oven and do it for a little bit more time until it is all finished. In another 15 minutes, the mold was heated up and the composite mold was poured out. We are now ready to do our metal casting with the tin. Obviously be careful, the casting is hot at this time. Don't burn yourself and you'll be using very hot metals so be very careful. Now tin is one of the nicest metals for a casting at home because it has such a low melting point. It melts at about 400 degrees Fahrenheit and it creates a very fluid metal. The lower melting temperature means that I can melt it with just a simple torch that I have at home. I put it into a crucible 
and I'm going to fill up that crucible with the tin before I pour it into the mold. I'm heating up the crucible first just so that when I pour in the tin into the crucible it doesn't just solidify as soon as it hits the surface. And now I'm heating up the tin and putting it into the crucible. As you can see, I have my special laboratory here of the kitchen stove. I put a couple heat bricks down on the bottom of it just to be safe. I should say at least safer. Another cool part of this is the composite mold that we melted out of the plaster mold can be remelted and reused in other molds as well. That would also work with the wax. You also want to heat up the plaster mold that you're using. Put that in the oven at temperatures well above uh, 300 degrees, 400 degrees, so that any water that's in it will be dried off. And carefully pour the metal into the mold. As protection, be sure that you have some type of heat gloves on. Do not touch the crucible. Do not touch the plaster at this point. This is very hot. And that's the process. Let this cool and we will remove the plaster from the casting. Now this is the fun part. You get to use the hammer. Break away the plaster from the casting. Metal, so you don't have to worry about breaking it. And there is our metal casting of an owl using the lost wax or lost composite mold process. You can clean that up a little bit and it's ready to go. We can now use the same composite mold mold to make another wax casting or composite mold casting and do this again. Thank you so much for watching this. Hopefully it helped. Let me know if you have any questions. And if you want more information, visit compositemold.com.